everyone, my name is Trevor Tese. Lived in Newark most of my life, you know, but I've needed uh, to leave on a number of occasions for various reasons, <laughs> which I'll go into later. So the morning, uh, Trevor, I believe he is. Yeah, that's right. Trevor Tacey. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. Well, I hope it is anyway. Yeah. That's what I've got well, we're in the wrong right. house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good morning. Trevor, now you've, you've actually, um, you've written a book, but what we do is, we'll, we'll get to that later on, yeah. It's about your life and, uh, you know, your trials and tribulations of growing up and how you've managed to make manhood, which is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so before we get into it, I mean, let's find out a little bit about you. I mean, where did you grow up? Where did it all start? Yeah, well, I grew up. I've, I grew up in Newark. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was born in Newark. I was born in Farnden somewhere. I don't know exactly where. But the earliest uh, uh, recollection I have is a place called Tomlinson's Yard, which is um, off uh, Castlegate, uh, sort of at the side of where the atrium is. On the left-hand side of where the atrium is, there used to be a little. Um, uh, called a, a little um, terrace, bunch of terrace houses down there, and I lived down the end of there, and that was the first recollection I have of, of uh, as a child, maybe two years old. Um, you can actually remember Yeah, that, I can I? remember that, yeah. That's incredible. It isn't? is, yeah, because I think the reason I can remember it is because, uh, 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 as I, uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the book, the book, the, the first memory I have is being stood outside in, in, in the cold, in the, in the, in the snow as a two-year-old, barefoot, and nobody in the house. My parents had gone next door to watch a television, thinking <clears throat> I was fast asleep, and I'd woke up, found nobody in the house, and, you know, I mean, was um, pretty scared, you know, I mean, and went out looking for them. It, it was only, it would have only lasted a couple of minutes, but it was impregnated on my mind. Right, so, yeah. so actually, is that like a level, is that, that would have been your first trauma? Yeah, that was my first trauma, yeah. Good heavens. Yeah, and then, um, Moving on from there, you know, we moved to different places. Um, we, we, um, my parents uh, owned a public house at one time on Victoria Street called the Horse. It's not called the Horse and Gears now. I don't know what it's called. Um, uh, organ grinder or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I have some quite good memories of, the, of there, you know. But eventually, um, I don't know when it started, but my dad started getting really violent because of my behaviours. And uh, and so that that was the start of it. But um, I don't want. To, I'm not going to go into too much detail up, uh, about that. But uh, eventually, we we did move out of the public house and we moved to um, Lincoln Road uh, down down on the Winterhop Estate. And um, why were we down there? Uh, my brother was killed in an accident. Uh, I was 12 years old at that time, uh, and and he was 10. He was two years younger than me. So there were three brothers. Uh, Alan, my youngest brother, uh, Graham, and uh, myself, and uh, so there was there was a trauma there. There was there was quite a few, couple of traumas involved with that as well because um, it was summer holidays, and I used because I was the oldest. I used to being you know, my parents were working, so I used to look after the uh, my two younger brothers. So a lot of the time we spent it fishing um, down at Crankley Point, and at this particular day. Uh, Graham had lost his um, fishing reel, uh, but I got down there with Alan and one of our friends, and then found it. And there was, you know, contemplation: should I go back? Shouldn't I go back? I didn't go back, and um, stayed down there because it was too complicated trying to get everybody back, like two or three miles from where we were. Uh, and and then found out that he'd been killed in an accident. Oh. So I was blaming myself, you know what I mean? So oh, all that wow. was all that going on. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I think <clears throat> one of the main things at that time, and it's not, I don't think it was unusual for anybody, but, but there was nobody to talk to. You know what I mean? I, I just sort of internalised all that. I never, right. you know what I mean? I never spoke to my parents about it. They were too wrapped up in their own emotions, you know, what was going on. Um, so things quietened down for me a bit, and then and then we moved to Appleton Gate, and then um, the violence between me and my dad sort of escalated, um, and eventually I left home after smashing his car up. <laughs> so, yes, son, you can borrow my car. I'll make sure it's home in my. No, place. he didn't. He didn't give me permission. He's working away. Oh, and no, I used oh. to sneak it out and put the petrol back in and put it back in the garage and thought I'd got it made, you know. That's but... the type of person we're dealing with here, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. 
until I did a couple of somersaults across Muscombe Field <laughs> and it, uh, wrote it off. So I decided at that point it was time to leave <laughs> before I got out. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was the 60s and uh, unfortunately for me, you know what I mean, there was lots of drugs about and everybody was trying them. But, uh, yeah, but um, I, wasn't, I didn't find this out until later, but my drug use, um, the, re the reason I, you know, I, I was thinking, I heard somebody say this the other day, you know, and they said, uh, you know, when you were growing up, you know, did you, uh, did you think that you were going to grow up to be a, you know, I mean, a, 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 an intravenous drug user, heroin user and crack cocaine, you know what I mean? So, you know, when other people are thinking about being firemen or, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My chosen profession is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I thought, you know, no, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? That was not my idea at all, you know what I mean? And when I started using drugs, it was just like a bit of fun, like everybody else was doing, but right. it turned into something else, you know? Because How did it get hold of you? And what age were you? I started using when I was about 15. You know, I mean, uh, 15 years old we started, going, you know, we were going to clubs and uh, travelling around the country to all-nighters and, and things like that, 15 and 16, you know, because I started work at uh, 15. Right. Was Where did you work? Oh, I worked at uh, Farrah's, it's called Hobel Boilers now, uh, but I worked there for uh, about, I, d I did about three years of my apprenticeship before... Um, that you can remember? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and before they realised, you know, that I was... <laughs> I was, I, was, um, I, was, I was missing too many days and for various reasons. And so, um, yeah, that went down the swanee. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the, the reason it got hold of me, I didn't know why it got hold of me. I couldn't understand, to tell you the truth, why some people would, would, would use, some of the people I was with, some of my friends, had use a few drugs, save some for later, you know what I mean? Or just use some, I mean, I was just using weekends to start with, but it escalated to, you know, sort of every day or the day before, starting the day before the weekend and, you know, needing some the yeah. day after to get back to work again. And so, it, you know, that was the escalation f for me, but I never knew the reason why, you know what I mean? I didn't really realise that some of my friends could just like stop, or stop altogether, you know what I mean? They did it for a year or two and then decided they didn't want to do it anymore. And I, I was like, I, I moved from, when that generation, when I wore that generation out and they went and did what they needed to do, you know, you know or they moved away from me because of my behaviours and that, you know, I'd move on to the, a younger generation. Which well, how was, bad were you with your behaviour? Well, you know, I mean, I was, I was breaking into chemists, you know, I mean, at that time, not at 16, you know, I mean, but by, by the time I was 18, I was. You know, I was breaking into um, uh, chemists on a regular basis, you know, I mean, all yeah. over the country. Yeah. Starting locally, you know what I mean, but then eventually all over the country. And then, and then getting, you know, and then getting, uh, the police started to uh, take note of me, you know, I mean, I was, yeah. I was sort of uh, invisible for a while and then I became, <clears throat> and then I, I became visible. I can, and, imagine, I can imagine them sitting there in the car, waiting and one of us going, oh, I've got a headache. Hang on a minute, it'll be along in a minute, we'll be out of here some Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it got that bad. I was, uh, you know, I mean, I had, I think I had three uh, different divisions looking for me, you know, I mean, from different counties of uh, drug squads uh, had me on their radar. Um, I had, you know, at, at, um, in the early part, I, married, I got, I got, um, I, I, uh, got married because I got my girlfriend pregnant, so I, I moved back to Newark. And my mother, the good Catholic she is, took us straight to the church and got us married off. <laughs> you know, what I mean that didn't last very long. Obviously, with it, you know, what I mean, with what with what I was doing. But yeah. um, but I lived down in Chelsea Avenue at that time, and I'd have pl police outside. It was like a standing joke that the police were outside the house. You know, what I mean, um, looking at we'd, we'd take great uh, fun out. Of, we'd get a lot of fun out of. Um, Sneaking around the back, coming up from from behind them, and then banging on the roof and saying, "Evening, chaps, how are we doing then?" You know, and then walk, walking in, so really taking the Mickey out of them. But uh, yeah, it, it it became a game as well, you know. Um, in in those early days, it was a game of just keeping one foot in front of the police. But eventually, prison sentences came along, uh, thick and fast. Of, uh, sorry, a bit of porridge. Yeah, thick and fast. You know, you know I did. Um, five, uh, five prison sentences, 
five or six, um, usually around a two year mark. Most of them were two years. Um, I did one for uh, a year, but that was fraud. I started uh, at the end of my, my um, criminal activities. I decided that breaking into chemists was not my uh, scene anymore. And I, you know, I was getting older at that time, you know what I mean? I couldn't <clears throat> put up with, you know, keep trying to survive in that environment. It was more difficult the older you got. Sure, yeah. And um, so, yeah, I was, I was uh, forging checks. Thought that might be a new career for me. But it didn't last very long. Did you make much money? No, not really. There you go. So <laughs> yeah. obviously that was a bad choice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I didn't make much money. But, um, uh, so, you know, I mean, that, that eventually, you know, there was a time when I was going into prison and I, I, I didn't care, you know, I don't care whether, uh, about anything, you know, I mean, my, 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 uh, my marriage had come to an end, you know, I, my wife had been unfaithful to me, well, God knows why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you know what I mean, but it was like yeah. that, I couldn't understand, you know what I mean, my mentality was so screwed up. Right. That I was so angry that she she'd done that, you know what I mean. But the, the truth of the matter was, I was going out on a Friday night and coming back two weeks later and thinking like, as long as I bummed her a load of money, you know what I mean, because oh, I'd make no. a lot of money, from, I'd be all right, you know what I mean. Two weeks. And, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. And um, some trips you went on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we'd do it up to also, you know, we were breaking into chemists and then selling selling out of town, you know what I mean, so not, not to bring too much uh, attention to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. There's only a few of us, two or three of us, local, local lad and Lincoln lads, you know, mostly. Are they still around? Are they still alive? Uh, no, not any of them. There might be one, you know what I mean, who left um, early on in, in our right. career, but all, all the rest died, uh, and one only recently. Uh, but some of them died quite quite a few years ago. You know, I, I want to I bring this up a, a little bit quicker then because what's quite astounding is, you know, you had your little gang and yeah. everything else. You eventually chose a different path, didn't you? You you decided to get yourself clean and... Mm. Uh, and do, do you think that's got something to do with, you know, why you're still about today? Oh, it definitely is. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, but and the thing is, you know, I mean, I thought I thought about this. Why didn't you know? Why didn't I? Um, why didn't I find recovery sooner? Right. You know, I mean, rather I was forty-seven when I went into a treatment centre. Well, it wasn't the first time I went into a treatment centre, but um, the first time was was that time when I w I didn't care about anything. You know, what yeah, I mean, yeah. I was like I, I wasn't interested in stopping. You know, what I mean, I I chose it as a you know, I mean, prison for me at that time was an occupational hazard. It, it was, it was just the way it was then. I was angry, you know, at the world, and you know, I blamed everybody for everything right. that happened to me. And and um, and I, and, I, and but in those early days, you know, there wasn't anything. You know, what I mean, they'd give you a methadone script for, you know, and I was on one for about twenty years. You know, what I mean, it's it's yeah. no different. It's just another chemical. You know, right, I mean, yeah, yeah. swapping one yeah. for another. It might have kept me out of prison, but that's about all. You know what I mean? It didn't yeah. improve my my family life or my behaviours or, or make it, you know, my family happy. Uh, <clears throat> and so, you know what I mean? And so, and, but there wasn't, you know, I went to a, uh, I went through a 12 step treatment program, Narcotics Anonymous, similar to AA, AA for yeah. people with, with alcohol problems. But the thing was that um, it wasn't around. You know what I mean? He didn't get started there. I think he started in London in, in something like 83. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I was 23 then. I was well into, you know what I mean, into my using. But it never came around the East Midlands until much later, you know? So it was 1997 when I, you know, when I <coughs> finally got into a treatment centre, thanks to my brother, you know, he knew, <coughs> who um, pointed me in that direction. He'd had somebody that he knew that had been through this centre yeah. and asked me, if he, <coughs> excuse me, yeah. If he wanted uh, me to make inquiries for him, this was the difference, you know. What I mean, between in the beginning when I wasn't interested whatsoever, right. to this time, where I was desperate to stop. You know, what I mean, I just had, had so, I'd had, it just broken me. You know, what I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore.
And I knew it, but I didn't know how to stop when, on me. When own. did that moment come? When did you realise, you know, like, enough is enough? Where, where were you? What uh, <clears throat> I, it, it was a process. You know what I mean? I, I'd been trying to stop for um, about perhaps two or three years before, you know what I mean, I actually did stop. And, um, and I'd be like cutting down the amount I took, you know what I mean, to the milliscule amount. Uh, but I couldn't let go of that last bit. My methadone, you know what I mean, I'd cut that down to like, you know, I don't know, milli five milligrams rather than like 40. And still couldn't let, out, let go of that last bit. It was, I don't know what it was about it. It was a psychological thing, you know what I mean? It was so frightening, the thought of letting go of that last little bit. And what was going to happen to me? Because I'd, I'd been through detoxes before, you know what I mean? And, and with heroin, you know what I mean? Three days and you're starting to feel better. I mean, I've had loads of times when I've been thrown into a police cell and just left to do it, you know what I mean? And it's, you don't get any doctors coming to see you, and they no, just, you know what I mean? They, they just, the more it hurts, the more they laugh through the door, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, that's just the way it is. But, but you know what I mean? The, the, I couldn't let go of that last little bit. Mm. And and I knew the only time I got clean, I got clean a couple of times, but when I got locked up, you know, and it was right. those last couple of sentences when, you know, I really wanted to stop and I was sending these letters out and saying, you know what I mean, uh, this is it, you know what I mean, I'm definitely uh, yeah. going to be all right. I did, but what I did, didn't understand, I didn't understand what addiction was. And I didn't understand what the root cause of the addiction was, which was the main thing. And, and that's what, what happened when I went through uh, the 12 steps. It gave me an opportunity, you know what I mean? For the first time, I'd stop without getting locked up. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, was, I was stopping of, of my own free will, you know what I mean? It, it, was, it was hard. A lot of the times it, it was like you know, clinging on by your fingernails, you know? It was like, you know, and it, it was, it was um, you know what I mean? I didn't know why. You know what I mean? I'd lose... I'd lose the obsession to use, you know what I mean, like, yeah. because the, the drug had been taken out of my system. Yeah, it's a windy off you. Yeah, but, but the mental aspect of it, you know, my mental health was no better, you know what I mean, because I'd still got these, what I didn't realise at the time, that these um, unresolved childhood traumas and other traumas throughout sure. my life, you know what I mean, were still, were still um, causing problems for me, you know what I mean, I was still angry, I was still uh, feeling... Uh, insecure a lot of the time. I was still um, suffering from stress and anxiety, not being able to sleep. You know, waking up and having uh, re uh, like uh, nightmares where I'd used in my dreams. Oh wow! How did yeah. That make, how did that make you feel? Oh, I woke up in the morning. And I was I was like, oh, shit! You, you know what I mean? You've you've done it again. You've done it. You know what I mean? You've failed again. You've let everybody down. And it'd take a few seconds before I realised. It was a dream, and it was wow. like, Phew. oh, thank God for that, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it's so vivid and so realistic, you know what I mean? And even, you know what I mean, in the, in the dream, in the, in the, well, the nightmare, it was, it was the feelings around it as well, you know what I mean? Sure. The euphoric recall of, of using, which I hadn't had was, for a long time. Oh, so, so, so you actually felt that, that euphoric, yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, really, it's wow. so vivid, honestly. Yeah, I mean, that, that must have been, uh, like you say, frightening and awful and going through your brain, oh my God. Yeah, let them all down again, all my kit, my children, because oh, I was married to Cindy then, you know, yeah. my, my current wife. So when did you meet Cindy? I met Cindy, well, we've been married 37 years, but for 12 years of that marriage, um, she stuck by me, you know what I mean, through my addiction, through some of the worst parts of my addiction. And... Um, I'd always managed to work somehow, God knows how. Even when I was on probation, you said, working? I don't know any addicts at work. <laughs> so, but I had to, you know what I mean? It was, right. it was like, if I didn't do that, then what would I be doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be back in prison. I definitely didn't want to go back to prison again. But I was still like that silly mentality, you know what I mean? I've been brought up with, really. Yeah. My dad went out to work, brought the money home. My mum, my you know what I mean, looked after the house and kept everything tidy and did yeah. all the cooking and looked after us. Good kids. old traditional values. Yeah. But 
you know what I mean? But they didn't work for me. They, they change, you know what I mean? As time goes on, those those values change. Well, you adapted to the, <laughs> yeah. to the lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, year. you know what I mean? As long as I bring the, the you know what I mean? As long yeah. as I bring the bacon home, everything's all okay. Yeah. The bills are paid, they ask, you know what I mean? What, what's the worries, you yeah, know what I mean? What more do you want, yeah. I was three years into my, into my recovery, right? And having a full on fight in the street with a load of neighbors. And my son, you know what I mean, was like pulling one off while I, you know what I mean, while I was fighting with another one. It was like, I came in from that, right? Uh, and my son, my youngest son, right? Jack, Jack, he's got kids of his own now. He was only about eight or nine. I can always remember him, right? This is how selfish, I, you know what I mean, how, how things yeah. took over for me. My son was stood at the hedge and I can remember, I can see him as clear as day and he's crying and I'm saying, what are you crying for? You know what I mean? I, I, I was all right, you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> you know, he was like, why are you crying? He says, does this mean you're going back to prison, Dad? Oh. And I was like, it was like being polexed. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Isn't yeah, it? And, and you know what I mean? And, and I'll tell you what happened that day, right? I went, to, I had to go to hospital because I, I forgot what I'd done. I'd done something to join the ruckus. And uh, I came back and I was, and he was on my mind all the time, you know? And, um, and I sat him down, he was, only, he was only nine or ten year old, you know, and I sat him down and he said, I said to him, I said, I heard what you said out there and it's really affected me, you know, and I said, I'll promise you from this day forward, I'll never lift my hand to another human being ever. And I never did, you know what I mean, from that day forward. Oh, yes. He had that much of an effect on me because I never realised, you know what I mean, how my behaviours affect the people right? around yeah, me. Right, yeah, but parents don't know, do they? No. You know all that learned behaviour of screaming and shouting at them and yeah. smacking them and everything? What the knock-on effect has. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and that's, that's something that I learned in recovery, you know what I mean? I found out about, um, <clears throat> you know what I mean? I knew, I knew that the traumas had, were having a big impact on all, all this behaviour, all this, the way I was acting, all this. And, it, and then I learned about a thing called, well, first of all, I, I, learned, I found out about EFT, the thing that I use and I talk about in my book, you know, the, the, the tapping. It was the only thing, you know, I mean, I found that cleared those things out of the way and allowed me to be who I was, really was, truly was. You know, because that had always been the case for me. When I got into recovery, it was a search for who I was. I never knew, you know, I mean, I, other people, when they shook my, I often used to think about when people shook my hand, so now you're doing trouble, now you're getting on, who do they remember, you know what I mean, who are they shaking hands with? Are they shaking hands with, you know what I mean, a drug addict that they knew from, are they shaking hands with somebody that they used to cause chaos in, you know what I mean, in their younger days, you know what I mean, and they, an they remember me from there, yeah. Or are they shaking hands with a recovering addict? Wow. You know what I mean? They, they, yeah, yeah. they don't know anything about me, really, or right. who I am. And I didn't know who I was. You know what I mean? I got all these labels, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, was, I was a, you know, ex-prisoner, you know what I mean? I was, I was a drug addict, you know what I mean? I wasn't to be trusted, I was this, that and the other. Uh, I was unpredictable. I had all these, all these um, labels that were on me, but they weren't who I was. And do you know something as well? I, I spoke to my wife after after I got, you know, I mean, after I, I got clean, after I'd been clean for some time. And I said to her, because I didn't understand, I said to her, uh, I says, why did you stay with me all those years? You know, I mean, that was horrendous what I put you through. I didn't realise it at the time, but I do now, you know what I mean? And I, and I, and I make amends for it every day I'm with her, you know what I mean? Ah, oh, bless you. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and she said to me, she says, I knew that wasn't you. I'd seen something in you, and I knew what, what that wasn't you, oh, and I was waiting for that to come back out again. Oh, it's making me well up. Yeah, and and it really stuck with me, you know what I mean, yeah, when yeah. she told me that. She saw something in me I couldn't see on myself, you know what I mean, but it was there somewhere, somewhere deep down was who Trevor really was. Mm. And that was what happened, that's what my search was, you know what I mean, even when I got into recovery, I said, if you went upstairs, you know what I mean, there's a, there's a library of self-help books because, you know what I mean, I'm not sure whether any of them did any good, but it was that search. I was still looking, you know what I mean, what, who am I? What do I do, you know what I mean, what's my purpose? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, what am I here for? You know? What did you find in, in recovery? Well, how did I find... What did you find in there 
with regards to yourself, you know, who, yeah. was, who was this new person that you found? Yeah, well, um, it was a new person as well because I realised that my, my, my personality had been created by what had happened in the past. And once I cleared what had happened in the past, you know what I mean, these behaviours started to fall away. And so then I started to find out who I truly was, you know. Um, you know, I, mean, I, I was this, this crazy person that was getting locked up every five minutes and getting into fights all the time and mm -hmm. thought it was clever and just trying to outpace the police and da 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 da. You know what I mean? To, you know what I mean, like out here, it's all plants and flowers. <laughs> My therapy is in the garden, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm growing, I'm growing plants from seeds and things, you know what I mean? And I love it. So you've gone back to Mother Nature then? Yeah, and, and it's interesting because in that book, you know what I mean, it's called Chasing Dragons. Well, Chasing Dragons is a, a euphemism for a smoking heroin. Yeah. Um, and ch Chasing Dragons and Butterflies. Well, the butterflies part of it was, 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 the, was the countryside because that was my saviour in so many ways, you know what I mean, during the dark times, you know what yeah. I mean, where I find myself. In nature was my only solace, you know what I mean, on my own, a lot of the time at night. In the middle of fields with my dogs or, or whatever. Look about it more in there. But it was, you know what I mean, nature and still is, you know what I mean? I, I look I mean if I am you know what I mean, I'm not a religious person but I feel close to the universe, you know what I mean? I feel that we're all connected. Uh, and, and and that was one of the things you, you were saying about finding yourself. It's like that what well, what addiction does more than anything is separates us completely from everybody else. You know, we become selfish and and just try, you know, just in survival mode. Yeah. And it, it, well, there just seems to be a, a, a move now. There's a, there's almost like a new movement building, and it's rumbling. And what I mean by that is, I'm seeing more and more people taking healing classes. They're looking at the yoga. They're looking at the meditation. They're looking at the well-being. They're looking. At, they're looking and seem to be searching for something else that this world can't provide, and it all seems to be heading back to Mother Nature. And it's like there's got to be some truth in it because why, why? Where are all these people coming from? Why are they doing this? Absolutely, I think there's a big tipping point at the moment, and maybe this pandemic is is, is sort of kicked it off as well. I think you're right. No, I, no, I mean, this, if, you, if you've got any mental health issues or you've got any issues that need to be addressed, isolation is, is the way, you know what I mean, we'll bring them to, we'll show where the cracks are. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And there's a, there's a lot of people really, I'm not saying, sometimes, you know, sometimes we need this, you know what I mean? It might be painful, you know what I mean? And, and, it, and, and it might be uncomfortable and a lot of people are shouting and screaming about, you know what I mean, the, 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 you know what I mean? But it's showing us, you know, some, it's showing us something we need to, that needs to be addressed. Right. You know, and I think, and, and today, you know what I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in, 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 in listening to my body, you know what I mean, and listening to my, my mind, you know what I mean, and what's going off. And, mm. you know, we've been, we've been so uh, socially conditioned from children, me included, you know what I mean, that you've got something wrong when you go to the doctor, he gives you a prescription, he gives you a pill and everything will be all right. It don't work, and they know now. People are starting to question that. Right. They're starting to realise that you know they're not the doctor. Well, I've never been into a doctor's right, and and, and he said to me, uh, you know, what I mean, and, and everything, taking into consideration everything that I've been through, you know, I and mean, all my addictions and so forth. He never once said to me, "What was your childhood like?" Not once. You know, what I mean, it was like, oh yeah, you, you, you'll need this. You know, what I mean, or you'll need yeah. that. Yeah. It's easy to prescribe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and it's the, the thing is, they're only dealing with symptoms. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. not looking at the underlying issue. Yeah. They're not looking at the root cause. They're looking at yeah. the, they're trying to deal with the symptom. And the symptom, unfortunately, a lot of people that I've come across, you know, what I mean, and work with, have found that when they try and stop taking the, their antidepressants or whatever they're taking, you know, to deal with a, a mental health problem, that the the side effects are uh, horrendous, you know what I mean? The detox off them, it, it makes coming off heroin look like a walk in the park. Which you never told about, are you? No, never told about. You know? No, no. So you have to go and research it to try and find out. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, um, you know uh, 
you, you're limping, you've got this pain, you've got that pain, take this, because it'll take it all away. Yeah. But what happens when it finishes? You know, where, where do we go from there? I mean, it's like with, with the Americans. You know, they give you a list of all the side effects that could happen and everything else. Yeah. Because they don't want it coming back and biting them on the bum. Yeah, they? yeah, they did it with Prozac, didn't they? And yeah, there's a lot of uh, suicides with, with yeah. Prozac. And yeah. then they had to actually put it on the yeah. list of side effects. Let, let me just ask you something. What type of uh, therapies do you undertake? What do you give out? I do I do a thing called EF, EFT, which I've already spoke about. Yeah. You know, um, um, emotional freedom technique, and that's mostly what I use. But I use I use another technique, which is a bit more complicated. But it's definitely you know, in, uh, one that I go back to time and time again if I'm t dealing with someone with a uh, uh, with an unresolved trauma, a serious one, and it's called matrix re-imprinting. And uh, so I'm I'm uh, I'm at a level three. Um, advanced practitioner in EFT and, and uh, I'm a practitioner in uh, matrix re-imprinting but I'm looking at other other things as well you know all, all the time I, you know I, I integrate other uh, therapies into uh, what I do mm. nutrition is a big one you know uh, supplements as well vitamin and nutrients uh, and they, yeah, they play a big part in, in, in mental health you know they talk about serotonin and things like that it's not always that's not always the problem mm. You know, I mean, it can be other things, uh, but um, with with the FT, it's it's a lot to do with a, a, a thing called epigenetics, uh, an an, uh, an emerging science that's coming out now that they're starting to understand how our thoughts and feelings affect our uh, our, our gene expression. You know, so we could turn genes on and off by thought alone. You know, what I mean, and, really, yeah, and they, they know that now, and, yeah. and so you know, when when people are in. Um, if people haven't dealt with uh, things from their past, you know what I mean? They're, they're, on, they're in the stress, they've got stress hormones running through their body constantly, 24-7. And that shuts down the immune system, that's something we need to be aware of, especially at this, yeah. this time in life. Uh, uh, this time we're in at the moment. And, and, and um, it, it affects something called the amygdala, which is the emotional part of the brain you know yeah. and it hijacks that and then we have all these things running wild in, and we you know after if we've been in it for a long time you know we think it's normal you know yeah. I mean it's like we're just coping you know trying to cope yeah. with what's going on no idea of how to enjoy life and I think that's that's the thing that I realize I spent so much time worrying about the past or worried about the future and not being able to live in the moment right you know what I mean I, I couldn't enjoy life I enjoy life completely now and I'm not saying I don't worry about it. Yeah, but it, yeah. It, it's like a passing. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not obsessed with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, every, yeah. every now and again. So, so let me ask you because I mean, you're going to be setting up this uh, new channel that's going to be going on your TV. Yeah. And it's all going to be about health, healing the mind, the body, and the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How do you feel about that? Because this is something yeah. that's new to you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, to a certain extent, yeah. I mean, I've done, I, you know, I've, um, I've, I've done a few uh, podcasts and things like that, but not at a regular spot, you know what I mean, where I can work through one thing at a time, you know what I mean, so we can talk about uh, intergenerational trauma, how it occurs, you know what I mean, and how to stop, because that's another part of it, you know what I mean, the thing that I'm really uh, passionate about as well. Is, is, is about this being intergenerational. A lot of the, you know, people don't realise that they're, they're suffering from these, these, these problems and they think it's hereditary, you know what I mean, that it's genetic in some way, and it's not, you know what I mean. They learn behaviours, there's things that happen to them when they were younger. And, and, and one thing I want to emphasise is there's no blame here. You know what I mean? There's no like, oh, my parents did that to me and my parents did this to me and my parents... My parents knew no better. My parents had brought their intergenerational traumas along with them and passed them on to me. This is an opportunity for anybody, you know what I mean, who, who really cares about their children. You know what I mean, I'm not saying people don't care about their children, but if they want to really look at um, how they can help them the most, it's like to clear these things out of the way so they can, they're clear and right. they're not passing these things on to their children. You can break the chain, you know what I mean, and that's, that's something I'm really passionate about. Um, and, and the other thing is, you know, that it's uh, self-empowerment, you know, yeah. I mean, we give our power away to doctors and psychiatrists and so forth, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, my own belief is that um, the National Health Service is one of the best 
services we've, we've got, we should be proud, we are proud of it, you know, yeah. in this country. But I would not go to a doctor with a mental health problem. If I had a physical problem, you know what I mean, I have a car accident, it would, you know what I mean, I want to yeah, be yeah, in the yeah. hospital, yeah. I want to be in A&E, you know what I mean, they're, they're, those surgeons know what they're doing. But as far as mental health goes, I don't trust them as far as I could throw them. You know what I mean? Is that because you, that they don't understand it? I think it is because they don't understand. They've never been taught about this. You know what I mean? That, that, yeah. that, that's the way they were, they were trained. You know what I mean? To, yeah. to, to look at the symptoms. You know what I mean? There's a, th there's a thing called, I mean, we might go into it later, but there's a thing called DMS5, uh, it's like their Bible, where all the diagnoses are. And I think there was something like, when it started off, there was about, 30 odd. <laughs> I mean, and I think now there's about 300. Right. And the reason behind that is, is because they can't prescribe a, a, a drug to someone unless they've got a diagnosis. Right. So you've got all these new ones coming up, you know, wow. like bipolar and, mm. you know what I mean? And, uh, What's going to be the first thing you touch on with your, with your channel? Um, I haven't really decided yet because there's so many different areas to go in. Right. But I, I can, what I can do, you know what I mean, and I, and I might just do that to start with. I might <coughs> show people how to use the EFT and I'm tapping on certain points, which are the acupoints that are closest to the surface of the skin. It, 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 it's, it's not new, you know what I mean? The Chinese yeah. have known it for 3,000 years, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. we're, just, we're just catching up. But the thing is, you know what I mean, there's natural ways to clear stress and anxiety. And the, and the easy things to learn, and we can, it's self-empowerment. It's people being self-empowered to treat themselves. Yeah. You know, if you have to go to the doctor, it's all, all well and good. These, these drugs, these antidepressants and things like that, were never supposed to be long-term drugs. They were like a short interim drug, you know what I mean? Just yeah. to get you over until, the, you know, until you can find the, um, yeah, yeah. What, what the real problem is. Uh, and, and even when they did the trials, they were only done over six weeks because that was how, all they were supposed to be done, uh, used for, six to eight weeks. That's my understanding. You've been on them for years? Yeah, years. Yeah. I wonder why they have so, so much horrendous problems trying to get off them. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know I mean? I can show people how to do F EFT. I can show them how to reduce their stress in about five minutes. <laughs> Serious? Yeah. I can show them the science around it, you know, there's a lot of research being done now where it's shown that you can, um, the amygdala, which is, I was talking about, is yeah. where, where the, uh, the powerhouse of our emotions are, uh, where that can be reduced by uh, between 25 and 40% in three rounds of tapping. Wow. You know, so there's, there's some you know, really, really um, amazing things that, that we can uh, look at. But um, and reducing stress and anxiety is 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 great on its own, you know, uh, because you know, then the thought processes improve. You start to feel a bit. Give more. me one example. How, well, give me give me one thing that I could do to reduce my stress. One thing. One thing. Give uh, me. Just breathing. A breathing exercise is a good one. Are we? So do you know about EFT or, 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 or just any? Oh, no, no, anything. anything. Yeah. Just to get your stress levels right, down. There's, there's a, a thing called the, the vagal nerve. Uh, it's called the wandering nerve. And it's, it's to do with our stress and anxiety, but it's, it's governed by our breathing. So if we breathe in, just one breath in, right? And I'll, I'll, it's hard to do this and talk at the same time. <laughs> but breathe in, right? And take a full breath in, right? Hold it for, say, to the count of 10. Right, I'll do it. All right. And then let it out. But let it out slowly over a longer period of time. It's got to be more than 10. There's something inside that's it's almost like a draining effect. Yeah. And I'm feeling because I was tight when I when I started, and then I'm just feeling that reduced a yeah. in the, in my sort of level. Yeah. And you just keep doing that. Yeah, do it two or three times, and you'll yeah. notice a difference. That's something you can just anybody can do, even if they're feeling stressed or sat on a bus or they're in the car or driving or whatever. You can just do it. Yes. Yeah. It's not always appropriate to be doing tapping while you're trying to drive. <laughs> 
Is that a bit of road rage? Road rage, a good one for road rage. <laughs> breathe. Oh, dear, oh, dear. breathe. Well, yeah. it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? Yeah. You know, because I mean, you, you're giving now. Uh, you know, with your channel, what, what are you hoping to uh, to get from it? What are the benefits going to be? Uh, benefits are to reach as many people as possible and empower them to take on, you know, to look after their own mental health yeah. and well-being. Oh, that's nice. And, uh, you know, because it will be, you know, be breathing exercise, it'll be yeah. EFT, I'll be showing you all sorts of different things, nutrients and uh, vitamins and, and things that can help with uh, And it's not just about mental health as well, you know what I mean? I suffer with joint pains, you know what I mean? Like arthritis, yeah. I've got a problem with my, with my shoulder and... Uh, um, Using things like turmeric, turmeric, and I call it turmeric, but turmeric, it's turmeric. Yeah. turmeric. You posh man. Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't think I just—it's phonetic, you know. <laughs> I just, I just don't know it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a turmeric. Yeah. Uh, and 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 different uh, uh, different things, natural, yeah. you know, natural uh, spices and things that can be really beneficial to us. But um, things like uh, we're we're really short of. Um, Vit vitamin B12 and zinc are really important parts of mental health. You know what I mean? Can can help us. Re everybody that suffers from depression are usually low in those two nutrients. Right, oh, really. B12 and zinc. You know what I mean? You can pick them up anywhere now. Yeah, online. yeah. yeah. We ain't got a break in anywhere, no. <laughs> no, no, not these things. <laughs> <laughs> gone. Yeah. gone. Before yeah. we conclude, let me bring. Hold that book up. Let's have a look at this book because this is the book that you've written. Yeah, this is the book that I've written. This is got it all in there. Well, not everything about nutrients and so forth, but it's got my life story in there. Uh, chasing uh, dragons and butterflies. Uh, my journey through trauma and addiction to uncover my true life purpose. Oh, maybe this is my true life purpose. Who knows? Hey, the, the thing is, you see, before before the book and everything else, like you say, none, none of this was visible, was it? No. You know, and with that life that you led before. Yeah. But who would have, yeah, who would have, nobody would have told me in a million years, you know what I mean, I'd write my own book, you know what I mean, I'd yeah. be an author. How long did it take you? The pandemic. <laughs> when it started, you know what I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 I suppose I started in about the April and I was, I had it published by the January, the yeah. you know, the first of January, the following year, so I guess from beginning to end, I think the book was written in about four or five months, but it was all the bits and bobs in between, sure. putting photos in. And, and did you, I mean, when you were doing the old memory recall, hmm. you know, on your past and everything else, how did that make you feel? Yeah, to, uh, well, that's interesting really, because, yeah, to start off with, when I was doing things in, 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 in the 12 step program, they do a, like a step four and five, where you write your life story out. Right. <clears throat> it was all much like being in a confessional box again, you know, it's like, yeah. you know what I mean, putting it all down there and there was a lot of tears and a lot of emotions and stuff like that. So it really did drag it Yeah, it dragged it all up to the surface. It's not a good thing to do if you haven't got anywhere to go with it, <laughs> you know what I mean, so I talked to another person about it, like what they call a sponsor, yeah. you know what I mean, so uh, I suppose, uh, um, uh, speaking about it helped a certain amount, but it didn't clear it by by any uh, stretch of the imagination. But it, it tidied me over. It's almost like tidied me over until I could find out um, what I needed to find yeah. out, which I did eventually. Um, <clears throat> but as time went on, you know what I mean? When I started to um, work with an EFT practitioner, I didn't have that so much, you know what I mean? I, yeah, it was emotional at times, but a lot of the time, um, it, it wasn't, you know what I mean? I was yeah. just, uh, I was just, uh, it, it says in there, you know, that, you know, I can talk about it today, you know what I mean, after doing what I've done. And, uh, and, I, and I said it in, in the book, when I was in treatment, uh, they got me to do the same thing, to write my life story, everything down, you ain't got to miss it. And I went out and I, and, I, and, I, and I spoke about it in front of about 30 other recovering addicts. Got no, you know what I mean? It was like people I didn't know, you know, complete strangers. And, right. and I found that the most horrendous thing I'd ever, ever done. You know what I mean? I was in bits. I was so angry. And, uh, you know what I mean? I wanted to lash out, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the only thing I knew what to do uh, to do when I felt like that, you know, when I feel hurt, mm. you know what I mean, my, my way was to lash out. And uh, this old, this old um, therapist came up to me and he took me to one side, he saw the state I was in, and he says, listen to me son, son, I was, you know, I was 47. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was about, he was in his 60s either, you know, at least. And he says, uh, listen to me son, he says, one day, Believe me, one day that will just be a story. And I thought to me, you know what I mean? And I hung on to those words. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And and uh, and and they were, you know, they were. That, that was what I was hoping for. And and that's what happened. Eventually, it well, was, now it's just a story. Yeah. That's no amazing. blame. You know what I mean? I don't blame my parents. Yeah. I don't blame anybody. You know what I mean? I had a big thing about the police. You know what I mean? It's. No, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, this was, this was my journey, it got me to where I am now. It was something, there was something about it. Yeah. So, hopefully with the channel we can get a lot more people to where they need to be, right? Yeah. That'll be amazing. I hope so. Trevor, thank you very much for your time this morning. And, uh, what's the name of that book again? Chasing Dragons and Butterflies. There it is, right. That's 30, what we need to read. 32 five-star reviews on Seriously? Amazon at the moment, yeah. It's another success! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a video up there, Nick. Have a good day. Thanks. Yeah, um, I just wanted to um, say if anybody's looking for a, or would like to try a free consultation out um, about uh, what, you know, what their problem is and, and how, how I can help them and uh, perhaps uh, give them a little. Uh, taster of uh, what EFT is so they can feel the benefits of it then uh, yeah just drop just uh, drop me a line on my uh, um, email address of uh, info at realchangesforlife.co.uk and I'll be happy to uh, help you or give me a ring on 07919-484-678 and um, we'll see what we can do but uh, yeah, you'll, um, if you've never tried it, uh, I, I, I'd really uh, encourage you to give it a go because uh, when we try something new, there's always uh, a little voice in the back of it saying it's a load of rubbish, it won't work, uh, da, 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 da. but the best thing you can do is just try it and make your own, your own mind up. So uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Bye. If you'd like to be featured on New York TV, why not drop us a line on info at newark-tv.co.uk Oh, and don't forget, hit the subscribe button.